before we start today's vlog, I would like to take an oath that I, Eric of the Cummins Camper, solemnly promise to not show any poop during the making of this video. I promise to keep this video informative, so informative that it may be the most informative Nature's Head composting toilet review that exists on YouTube. Again, there will be no feces shown during the making of this video. You're all very welcome. We're also going to be taking you through an entire clean out process of the toilet. We'll give you a whole bunch of tips and tricks on ownership of your composting toilet and how to maintain it, keep it in proper working order so that you don't have any problems down the line. In the world of composting toilets, there's a multitude of different compost mediums that you can use. Everything from peat moss to pine chips to coconut core, which is what we use. Uh, coconut core is super readily available. You're able to get it at a lot of different pet suppliers, actually. We've gone to PetSmart and Petco and found that they have coconut core there for reptile bedding. So you would take the same product and take it from its brick state, which I'm about to show you guys how to do, and you would convert it from that brick state into the same compost, kind of medium sawdusty-like consistency that we're going to today, and you would allow your lizard to live in it. So they've got it for you there for, I think it's about $10 for a three pack, or if you have the ability to get things shipped to you via Amazon, you can get it Amazon, of course, too. So our compost core, we keep in our dry storage compartment underneath the potato chips and the tortilla chips. Here we go. Okay, so here's one bag that's already broken down. And here it is in its brick form. So this is my example before of how it's used for lizards. Next, we're gonna show you how to take it from this brick state and make it all light and fluffy and get it to a point where you'd wanna put it inside of your composting toilet. All right, we interrupt this, this compost core and nature's head composting toilet related video for a lifestyle shot on how you return your water jugs in Mexico. So since we already have this one bag of compost already made up, we are working with just one brick here today. Normally we would do two, save the other half of one or whole of one, depending on how much extra we have, that way you can add it at the end if you need some more um, medium, or you can save it for the next time. So the coconut core brick, we're gonna take some water and add water to the brick, attempting to soak it on all sides. I also find that if I just leave some water down in the bottom of the, the bucket, it will naturally absorb the water and draw it into itself if you just rotate it around a handful of times. The goal here is to use the least amount of water possible because you want your medium to be very dry when you put it into your composting toilet. The more wet that you put your compost medium into your toilet, the sooner it is going to get gross. Um, the more dry your medium is, the better. It'll allow you to use it for more visits from the solid department. So we are almost done with breaking down our compost core from its brick state into the nice fluffy dirt-like substance that we want it to be. Not too much longer we'll have this guy as nothing but powder. So there's two ways that you can dispose of your solids as a composting toilet owner that I've come up with. One is the trash bag procedure where you take your compost, flip it over in your, uh, into a trash bag and dispose of it into a trash can. I jokingly call that an adult diaper, which is fine. We do it all the time. But out here in the middle of the bush, we're gonna do a oversized cat hole, similar to how people would go number two if they were camping in the woods. But in our case, we're taking about two weeks worth of camping in the woods and putting it into one hole that is gonna be super deep and super far from water so that all the people out there that may 
have judgments to be made and said about, did you do it this way? Did you do it that way? Yes, got plenty of space to decompose. Here's our hole so far. This is my very large head showing that a big head can fit in the hole so far and we're only gonna make it bigger from here. So I feel like our hole is sufficiently big at this point. It is the length of the spade shovel that I have and the depth of it is about two thirds the spade shovel and the width is probably about two thirds of the spade shovel also. Don't worry, I know I made an oath at the very beginning of this to not show any poop during the making of this video. I still plan to be uh, truthful <laughs> and fair to that oath. So don't worry, I won't show you any of the actual getting rid of the stuff, but I did want to show the hole that we dug so that you can see one avenue for disposing of your waste in the wild. All right, so we got to take the toilet out of the camper first, remove the squatty potty. In here, we've got the power supply line for the 12 volt power. So you'll unplug that. And then there's the vent hose that will undo. And then to get this thing out, you've got to kind of do a, a shimmy and a waddle. Our bathroom door is tight enough that there's a little bit of a, a method to getting it out. That's your toilet there, all removed, pretty darn easy. Now we just gotta take it outside. A bathroom with a view. Okay, so the next step is you gotta take off the top half of the toilet. You got two retaining clips on each side and then it just slides off a little wiggle. This lid just separates and uh, I'll show you guys how to clean out the different vents on the inside of this. So in order to save your virgin eyes, we didn't want to show you the actual ridding of the solids. You can put that together on your own. It's pretty simple. Take the thing, turn it upside down, whether it's in a plastic bag or in a properly dug oversized cat hole. Either way, flip it up, let gravity help you out. Get as much of the solid material out and then you have to clean the solid section out. So I used a bunch of the dirt that I was going to use anyway to backfill the oversized cat hole. And I put all that dirt inside of the composting toilet and ran the tumbler around a bunch to try and clean off and do like an initial pre-cleaning before having to use water. Um, but that'll be our next step is taking some water. We're gonna actually use water from the gray tank, right? Rather than using brand new, perfectly purified fresh water Use that water from the gray tank and slosh it around inside and do a bit of a cleaning. I'll show some of it. I promise to pixelate anything that's super graphic. This is good. You can all see what's happening without having to actually see what's happening. So I'll shut that down and just uh, do a little cleaning procedure in here. Your goal is to try and get anything that's your leftover compost medium or solids off of the wall of the toilet and then go dispose of it properly. And then you're probably gonna have to come back and do it again a couple times in order to get the whole thing truly cleaned out. Cause you do, you do wanna make sure that you clean it out thoroughly. I've had some times where I've taken the lazy route and I just, put new compost in there without cleaning it out and it doesn't last as long. You find that you might end up with fruit flies um, that if you change out and clean it out every single time you won't have. And you'll also, again, just kind of find that the medium lasts that much longer on your fresh change out when you do a really thorough interior cleaning. So once you run out of perfectly good gray water, You'll, if you have an outdoor shower, it's a great opportunity to utilize it. If you don't, don't have an outdoor shower, I don't know, figure out another way to do a deep cleaning on this thing. But on the flip side, you really don't want to use a ton of water on your poop. 
Your tools don't have to be terribly fancy to scrape the poop off of the wall of the toilet. A stick will certainly suffice. And then I've got a couple of paper towels here that will get into some of the more nitty gritty of trying to make this thing like new again. Marissa just raised a valid point. I'm expecting comments below and criticism of the fact that I am not wearing gloves and that's because I'm gross and I don't care about being gross. If you're judging me for not wearing gloves while dealing with my own doo-doo, thank you for the judgments. I appreciate it. Yes, I'm a gross human being. So I won't show you the inside as I'm here with the paper towel, but ideally you want to try and get the metal rod, the tumbler rod cleaned off. Um, the outer walls where you'll find that some solids still want to stick around, you'll want to get those cleaned up. And the underside of where the top seat base um, attaches to and mounts to, from when you flip it over, a lot of that solids and compost kind of want to hang out on the under lip there. It's, it's a gross procedure, but you got to get under there, whether it's with pressurized water or a paper towel. Um, but yeah, make sure you get it all, all of the doo-doo. A little bit more rinse. By and large, that's done. So the next maintenance item on this lovely toilet is going to be, there's a filter that is between the vent and the outside world. There's your cute little computer fan inside there. So we're gonna take out these screws here in order to take this plastic housing off, which will then expose the fan. We're gonna take the fan out and then under the fan will be the filter that we're gonna clean. For this, you'll find there's an advantage to having obnoxiously two different size screwdrivers, the larger one for the outside screws, and then when it goes to taking off the computer fan in there, you'll want this little guy. So once you take those screws out, you'll be able to take this plastic piece off of the outside of the toilet, thus exposing your computer fan. So, step two, take these screws out. There's a cute little filter on here. This filter, that's kind of really the area that you want to make sure it's clean. I find that if you clean it every other uh, compost change out, you're in pretty good shape. But to clean it, you need to get in here with a toothpick and pick away at the dust buildup that develops on the inside of this filter. I'm not doing a great job at it because I'm doing all this one-handed, but let's see if I can do this with two hands. The dust buildup that develops on this fan, it's not from you or your waste or anything like that. It's from the compost medium that's in your toilet. When you're tumbling the, the mechanism inside the toilet and the compost is really dry, you're kicking some of that compost medium up into the air. And then this fan is sucking that dusty, dry compost medium through said filter and the filter is doing its job. So it's not as though there's um, anything on here that's human waste related that you're cleaning off. You're really just trying to make sure that the airflow can pass through. I've put the whole fan assembly back together. One key thing that I should have mentioned that I did not because I wasn't filming it is you do need to make sure that the orientation of the fan is put back properly. I spent a lot of the time early on in our Nature's Head composting toilet career taking that fan and flipping it around when I was insecure about whether I did or didn't put it in directionally correct. The easiest way that I've figured out now is that that label is always faced outward when it's in the proper orientation. So that's pretty much it for the maintenance on the Nature's Head composting toilet. 
Next step is we'll put the compost back into said toilet. I'm gonna do that inside because the wind is picking up and you don't want your nice, dry, fluffy compost blowing all over the place. So the toilet is super clean on the inside for a composting toilet. So you wanna lift the toilet lid up and open where it disconnects at the halfway point. So here's our nice fresh compost core. All it takes to add it into the toilet properly is you lift up the lid at the midsection point and get all there. So your measuring device for how much or little compost medium you need is your tumbler. If your tumbler is not properly covered by the compost medium or at the same plane as your tumbler, you don't have enough compost core in there yet. So fortunately for us, I've already got another bag of the compost medium here. I'm gonna add some more. I'll break it up and it's really gonna be just sort of this at this point. So before putting the whole toilet assembly back in to the bathroom where it belongs, you've got this urine jug to contend with. So the urine jug is really hard to get clean. You've got quite a bit of buildup on the inside walls. All that shadowing that you see, that's essentially vitamins, calcium, part of your excretion process building up on those walls. So the only way I've found to get rid of all of that stuff on the sidewalls of the, of the urine jug is to take water and rocks and put them in there and shake it up a whole bunch until you break off all of those deposits on the side of the urine jug wall. Um, it does help fix some of the aroma, it does. But the flaw, even with cleaning it, is you just put it right back in and once you start going number one in there again and it fills up, the smell comes right back. So there is a smell to the urine jug, but once the urine jug's in the toilet and in your in your bathroom and the vent fan's going and your, your seat is lowered or the lid is closed, you're not gonna have the aroma. So don't get scared of how bad your pee jug smells when it's outside of the toilet. Lift up the top half of the assembly, slide your pee jug in, flip your latch closed, latch on the other side, and your whole unit is ready to go back in. Ugh. So just wrestle with this thing a little bit. Okay, so it fell on top of that original black plastic item from the original toilet. Then we are gonna just take our vent hose, slide that over the correct spot for it and plug in our 12 volt power again. All of a sudden that fan is going and blowing. So and with that, we're ready for another three weeks of two people living in this camper full time and going to the bathroom. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We're gonna to continue to come out with more content, both related to our truck camper and the modifications and changes we've done to it. But we'll also have some more typical vlog type travel documentary things going on too once we get this camper up and moving again. We plan to check out the rest of the Baja Peninsula that we haven't seen yet before we head back to the United States. And I really wish you would just go away so I can finish my bowel movement here. Thank you. Bye.